Allah tells us in the Quran, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is Allah who should be your ultimate objective. When everyone else makes something else their objective, their desires could be their objective, their wealth could be their objective, a type of relationship that they fall into could be their objective in life, a particular job that they want to reach, they make that the ultimate objective in their life. Yes, a Muslim can make a job or relationship or anything like that a main objective in their life. However, it should not be before the objective of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll tell you what happens to people who make other things their main objective and their ultimate goal and forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hereafter is their objective. When a person makes their family, for example, their ultimate objective and their job, their ultimate objective, and then they lose their job one day or a member of their family dies, what happens to that person who has lost that ultimate objective in life? They become suicidal. They become miserable. They feel like they have no reason to live anymore. They lose their way and their purpose in life because that ultimate objective has gone. You find that person becoming miserable, angry at their parents, angry at their children if they have children, angry at their brothers and sisters, angry at society, angry at Islam itself. And when a person makes their role model other than the Prophet wasallam, then when their role model whom they have placed in his place fail them, they also become miserable, they become unhappy. Brothers in Islam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, He put in us something very special and He valued you with that. The thing which He valued us with was the reason why He ordered the angels to prostrate down to your father Adam alayhi salam. And Iblis refused because he knew your value. This spirit or this soul which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed inside of us is what makes us valuable and it needs to be nourished. And this soul has only one objective. Allah created it to have a very strong connection with Allah its creator. When we nourish this soul, we have nourished our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we nourish this soul, then whatever you lose in life, your wealth, your health, your relationship with someone, some members of your family who die, an education which you could not reach, then you know that there is always something you can fall back on. And that is that soul, that ruh, which when you forget about it, the ruh begins to cry and yearn and say, where are you taking me? Why are you not nourishing me? Why do you only think about your body and your desires and you forgot about me? Why do you only think about your mind and you forgot about me? Why do you think about this and that and you forget about the thing which connects you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And so when a person becomes unhealthy, for example, and they haven't nourished their soul, what happens to them? They don't become patient during that time. They begin to get angry at the most beloved of people and they begin to blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. When I follow these objectives, what happens to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my salat and my fasting? It becomes secondary. Everything revolves around whatever you make as your objective. And brothers, we are a slave to something. Every single person has a God of some sort. We are a slave to something. When this particular thing governs your life, governs your time, revolves everything around it, then it becomes your God. If your salat becomes secondary to this objective, your fasting becomes secondary to this objective, the people who have rights towards you, such as your parents, become secondary to this objective, then that objective becomes your God. This is what governs your life. And you know what happens when a person makes a particular objective other than Allah, their purpose? On the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, let that which you made your objective save you today. You know, we have a saying, we have a Ford company and a Holden company. They manufacture cars. And we say, okay, if a person worked for Ford, do you expect Holden to pay them? If you work for a particular company that is in competition with another company, and then you expect that other company to pay you, does that make sense? No, it doesn't. It's quite absurd. So when I work for someone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, then it's only fair that you expect the reward to come from them. And this brings to light a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was speaking to a man named Mu'adh, a companion named Mu'adh ibn Jabbar radiallahu anhu, where he said, and this is in Sahih Muslim, that on the day of judgment, a scholar and a donator of wealth and a person who died in the cause of Allah, apparently will be called on the day of judgment. And each one of them will be asked, first of all, the scholar, what did you do with the knowledge which I gave you? And he will say, I did it only seeking your pleasure, my Lord. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, you are lying. The angels will repeat, you are lying. And then Allah will say, you only learned this knowledge and spread it so that people can call you a knowledgeable man or a knowledgeable woman. This is what your objective was and you will only receive what you intended for. 
you have received it already. Then the person who donated their wealth, Allah will ask, what did you do with the wealth I gave you? They will say, I did it for your sake, O oh Allah. And Allah will say, you are lying. The angels will say, you are lying. You only did so so that people can call you a generous person. And you have received that which you intended for. Then the person who died, what did you do with the body I gave you? And he will say, Ya Rabb, I died in your cause, seeking your pleasure. But Allah will say, you are lying. And the angels will say, you are lying. You only did this so that people can build monuments out of you and call you a hero. And you have received what your objective was for. As for today you have nothing with me. So the Prophet ﷺ grabbed hold of the knee of Mu'adh and said to him, Ya Mu'adh, these are the first three people with whom hellfire shall be ignited. Allahu Akbar. A alim whose knowledge reached the end parts of the world and people benefited and probably repented and became better people. And this person with all his wealth and that person with all their life. Allahu Akbar. They end up in vain? Yes. Why? Because Allah's name is Al-Adl. He is the just. Yes, he is compassionate, but he's also the just. If you do things for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for some otherworldly purpose and your intention is so, then Allah will only give you for that which you intended. Some people, they act religious when they want to ask for a girl, for example, hand in marriage. So they go to the father and they put on an act. Look at me. MashaAllah, my beard is on. I've got my uh, hat on. I go to the masjid, MashaAllah. But they're putting on an act. So they will do anything to get to her and to trick the father and the family. As soon as they are married, the true colors do come out. Your brotherhood in Islam. When you meet a brother and say, Salamu Alaikum, the first thing on your mind should be, I really want this person to be a brother of mine in Islam. And I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see our love for his sake. You don't concentrate on where he's from or what kind of a background he has. And then I'll decide whether I'm going to be close to that person or not. We say we are brothers and sisters in Islam because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called us brothers and sisters in Islam and let us start from there. When I meet my parents and I feel that they're not giving me what I actually want and they're not understanding me, then I should remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at my objective. Is my objective Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger? Yes, it is. Then therefore I'm going to respect them and deal with them and sacrifice my own needs in order to please them insha'Allah ta'ala. And when I do any type of action, then the sincerity must be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost. If you do that, then you'll discover what your identity is and you will know your purpose in life. All your education will be directed in that direction. Your work, your study, your sitting down at home, your spending of time on the internet, everything becomes fit to fulfill that purpose of making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your objective. So you only choose your wealth coming from halal and you spend it on halal. You look on the internet on that which benefits you and you avoid the things which harm you. When you are in secret and alone, you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and still stay away from the things which he has forbidden because you know that ultimately on the day of judgment, it is your actions and the sincerity of your actions that matter the most. If you want to know what kind of a person you are, then look at yourself when you are alone, when nobody else is watching. Does your prayer equal the same value as when you prayed in front of people? When you make your dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is it the same as when people are watching you? What kind of a person becomes of you when you are alone in the darkness and only Allah can see you? Is this a time to go to my desires and fulfill them? Or do I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala watches me in open and in secret? Make your intentions clear. Make your sincerity clear. Make Allah your objective and Allah promises you happiness in this world and in the hereafter.